Welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community. This is actually a Tattoo Now show. Uh, very excited to be catching up with Paul Talbot. Uh, he's kind of like, I don't know, well, we'll you'll we'll see exactly what he's like. He's awesome. He's got uh, a great history inside of a variety of different arts, but his tattooing is very unique and he's always working on different content. He's got shows and that tattoo show and Electric Modern Tattoo, I believe, is the series about his shop. Uh, they're both awesome. So I'm really excited to be catching up with him. Uh, I would do want to let you know that, you know, what we have coming up and how you could always tune into these live shows and the replays and whatnot. So this is a good time if you're watching on the Facebook or the YouTubes to share it around with people. Let us know in the chat room if it's working for you because we are working. I was uh, joking with Paul earlier. We all have like a million uh, jobs now. So it's not, not only a host, but it's host and tech and uh, ad reader and whatnot. So, okay, anyways, uh, if no matter where you're watching this, the live shows can always be found at the Reinventing the Tattoo community. Head to either of the app stores, do a search for Reinventing the Tattoo, give it a download. It's really easy to sign up and the event link is the first thing that's there. Uh, often there are shows where you can beam in and join. Um, let's see here, I'm going to the script so I don't, so I can figure out where the hell I am here. Um, looks like this is working it's live now okay perfect um if you are okay so we have all of these shows we have seminars we have discussion panels we have interviews we have drunk critiques they you know if you don't know where to start you could always go to reinventing 247.com and there's anywhere between two and five replays happening at any given moment and if you scroll down to the bottom of reinventing 247.com there is a spot for you to enter in your tattoo studio address and your artist information, answer a couple of questions, and we will send you uh, the soon to be world famous reinventing sample packs. They include Cheyenne cartridges, they include raw pigments, uh, a t shirt from Ricardo, and other things that people are sending. I'm sending over some uh, D Lies Pro and uh, some of the wraps. And yeah, uh, I think there's some reinventing stickers. Anyways, Reinventing 24-7 to check out, like, uh, you know, at kind of at random, there's a schedule there, so you can plan in advance, but you can check out the shows. Um, otherwise, just go to subscribe at the YouTube or the podcast. Uh, but again, the Reinventing Tattoo community is the best place to go. Um, it, the weekly shows that we have, and it is amazing, we can't thank everybody that's watching and the people that are leading and contributing to these shows enough. On Sundays at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we have a Reinventing Drawing Group with Jason and Lisa. It is uh, the Reinventing Drawing Groups encourage artists of, you know, artists and tattooers to beam in to the Zoom link and everyone kind of draws together. And it, it is awesome. It's people from around the world and we are between three and 12 sometimes. Uh, so, yeah, so that happens one o'clock Eastern every Sunday at 9 p.m. every Sunday now. Again, these are all Eastern Standard Times. We have the Tattoo Weekly, which is uh, Lauren from Reinventing, Jake, from, Jake Meeks from the Fireside Tattoo Network, and I'm going to be on there from Tattoo Now, I'm Gabe Ripley from Tattoo Now. We will be covering some of the highlights of the last week's streams, because there's so many, um, that it's great to, to kind of uh, catch some of the, the replays, and we'll, we'll grab some of the highlights. We'll do some deep dives. Everyone's got channels from, you know, from, you know, some like 10 years, I think, Jake and I have been going on with, uh, with these interviews and such. Um, anyways, that's every uh, nine o'clock on Sundays, uh, the Tattoo Weekly. Monday mornings, <laughs> maybe Jake Meeks and I will figure something out. We have another draw, uh, reinventing drawing group first thing in the morning. Um, it's eight o'clock for him. He's in Central time. Anyways, Jake Meeks is doing a reinventing drawing group Monday morning, bright and early. Uh, it was the first one we did. It's always actually pretty popular. It's a great way to start your day. Uh, nine o'clock at night on Mondays, we have subscribers exercises with guys. So if you're a paying subscriber, that is, and actually, thank you very much. You are the beating heart of the reinventing community. Um, not only do you get the, the what was the book and now the online course with all the videos, but it's Monday exercises with Guy. You can get your homework critiqued. It's amazing. It's like going to the art dojo. It's, you know, seeing artists do this every week for months now. I mean, the work is actually uh, markedly improved. It's awesome. Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, we have a drawing group with Ricardo. He always has his materials list and his thoughts gathered ahead of time. It's, a, it's pretty structured. It's awesome. Uh, every Wednesdays at 12 noon is the Tattoo Now show, which is actually the show that you're watching now. If you're watching live, thank you very much. It is probably Wednesday at noon. Well, if you're in Eastern time, I know that Paul is uh, five o'clock. Uh, let's see. Thursdays at noon, we have the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. 
Jordan Rokas and Fawn Baker are doing two hours at least every week with awesome tattoo collectors. And then Thursdays at seven o'clock as a subscriber's foundations exercise with Kiri. That is a tremendous amount of weekly exercises coming up. Uh, they happen for free because of our sponsors. Uh, we will catch up with them right after we talk about our live shows. It's amazing. We're doing live shows again. Hey, if this is working for you, could you please let us know uh, where, if it's working, where you're beaming in from so that, yeah, we know. And I'm going to take a quick sip. Doing these live is crazy. And I'm, and I'm trying to keep up. If you watch Paul Talbot's That Tattoo Show, uh, Paul and Chris, they have that thing edited and it's going back and forth and I've been watching them like nonstop. So I'm trying to rapid fire this, but I have to take a breath. Okay, October 3rd to the 6th is the Paradise BYOB. It has got an awesome lineup. It, I have the video ready, paradisebyob.com. It's uh, like $100 for the four days. It is a Sunday to a Wednesday, but if you buy them um, within the next week, there'll be a discount, a deep discount, because we want to thank everybody for coming on out. Anyways, uh, there'll be lots of seminars a la carte that you could add on uh, or just uh, enjoy the stage shows because there's going to be lots of interviews, panels. Uh, this will be, there'll be a career critique. Of course, we're going to do a portfolio critiques, but this is a panel of awesome tattoo shop owners, and it'll be like you're doing an interview. It's almost like tattoo artist Shark Tank. Uh, you'll get interviewed by three to five tattoo shop owners. They'll look at your portfolio. They'll give you a full rundown of either why they would want you to guest at their shop or what you would need to improve to get there. Anyways, Paradise BYOB, it's like a paradise show. We're putting it together October 3rd to the 6th, 2021. November 12th to the 14th, 2021. Pandemic uh, allowing, we will be over at the Brussels Tattoo Convention. A fair amount of reinventing tattooers are coming over, a lot of your favorite streamers. <laughs> um, and then Nick Baxter is coming over to do a, a seminar. Ivana will be doing a seminar. I'll be doing a seminar. And let's see, uh, Mark Needlejig is coming over. He'll do a talk about uh, the history of tattoos through uh, the eyes of the needles. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, well, I don't know if he's actually going to call it that. That was what I came up with, but I think it's awesome. Anyways, it'll be Art Jam subscriber meetups in Brussels. That's Brussels, Belgium, November 12th to the 14th, February 5th to the 6th, 2022. Next year is Reinventing the Tattoo Live coming from Red Tree slash YouTube's compound. Uh, we are connecting with Derb, who will be hosting a range of, again, seminars, discussion panels, critiques. So there's going to be an art jam. The first day is going to be open to the public. So everyone will be excited to come on out and join some of the activities. And then the next day, the Sunday will be a professional development day. So that's uh, February 5th and 6th. Pencil it in. More details coming soon on that. Registration is going to be pretty reasonable, but it will be, you want to register in far in advance because tickets are going to be limited. Uh, let's see, July 8th to the 10th, 2020, 2022, the Rock River Tattoo Art Expo. TattooArtExpo.com, Rockford, Illinois. Cliff Breakers is an amazing venue. It's overlooking a river. Guy will be doing a full reinvention track in a theater. In a theater, it's awesome. It's like designed to do lectures and stuff. So we'll have that running for the reinventing the whole time. About 100 tattooers. Rob, our other partner, will be doing bringing the tent talks. Uh, that's the July 8th to the 10th, 2022 next year. July 29th to 20, 31st, 2022. Tony Urbanic, who does, does a lot of the machine seminars. On reinventing, we'll be out there. Uh, Rock City, so, excuse me, Rubber City Tattoo Invitational in Akron, Ohio. And then last live event is October 20 to the 23rd, the Paradise Tattoo Gathering, Jimmy Peak. It's where we're doing the BYOB this year, but next year we're going to do the full-on tattoo show. That'll be the Thursday to Sunday. <clears throat> okay, sponsors. Uh, upcoming professional development can always be found at courses.reinventingthetattoo.com. The Canon is there. That's where you beam in for the Monday subscription. But again, there's dozens of hours of webinars and whatnot under the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon. It also has a business class. Andre Malcolm does a sleeve design, BJ Betts lettering, Bonte World portrait classes, courses that reinventing the tattoo.com. World tattoo events.com is the most comprehensive website for tattoo conventions. And now that they're happening again and being postponed again, you definitely want to check it out, get on their mailing lists. It's, uh, it's amazing, worldtattooevents.com, inkjetstencils.com. You do all of your prep, uh, your tattoo reference prep on your iPad or your stencil prep, excuse me, on your iPad or your computer. And then you print out in the Epson tanks. Uh, custom tattooers are printing out sleeves and back pieces in one shot on oversized printers. And street shops are printing out tons of different designs. They're awesome for doing um, like flashes and stuff too. Check it out, inkjetstencils.com. 
uh, raw pigments.co acrylic inks that don't dry out in the cup. They are vegan. They're not vegan free. They're vegan friendly. Raw pigments.co. They've got a lot of videos and they're doing interviews here on reinventing. D Lies Pro, otherwise known as Dermalize, has a healing wrap that is designed specifically to heal uh, and to heal tattoos. So if you're still using cling wrap, it's like designed not to breathe. Uh, you might check out the videos, d Pro in the United States, Dermalize in the rest of the world. Thank you, International Trademark Laws, for making us differentiate that. But one way or another, you should check it out. They've got videos, use it as directed. It's um, I've used it myself. And again, I, um, I get a healing rash with a healing wrap. Uh, this stuff, if you're careful with it, you know, comes off pretty good. Anyways, uh, let's see, TattooNow.com. I am a computer geek now that reinventing is getting in order. I'm paying attention to the 100 websites we have. So if you have a website with me, give me an email right now. We could do upgrades. Uh, we are also taking on new search engine optimization clients. That's the SEO stuff or CRM, client relationship management. It's actually even more important than who does your website is how you're interacting with your clients. That's stuff I really dork out on. It's like programming experiences. Anyways, tattoonow.com for geeky businessy stuff. I also do consulting for tattoo shops. Last but not least, actually the foundation of the reinventing the tattoo community. One of the reasons why we are all here is Guy Atchison. Check out GuyHSN.com. He has been a uh, one of the at the forefront of tattoo education, as well as just tattoo application and being an amazing visionary with his art and his tattoos. He's always pushing it. He's collaborating with everyone all the time. Not everyone all the time. He's collaborating with amazing people all the time. He's encouraging us, encouraging everybody to collaborate. Uh, GuyHSN.com. His biomechanical book is amazing, and it is there for your viewing pleasure. Um, I'm going to ask Paul to, to hop on here. If you have uh, positive things to say, please um, let the, let them let us know what everyone know in the review sections of the podcast of the YouTube. And if you have constructive criticism, uh, management at reinventingthetattoo.com, or if you want to sponsor the show or bring us to an event, uh, that's the same email. And uh, Paul, thank you very much for joining us. I, uh, oh, I have my tea oh, my. here ready. I, I have my, my, my kettle was going beforehand. I'm all prepared. I've gone the opposite direction. I went through coffee, you know. <laughs> awesome. You know, I, um, I definitely drink tons of tea, but I've never, I get into the coffee. I don't do it. It's, um, and, and I don't think that the caffeine is the same, but um, if I don't have my tea, I get a headache. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was reading the other day that um, uh, stimulants help with ADHD. So I don't, I think if, if I was a kid born now, then maybe they would have said, no, you're ADHD kid. You, you need to have a stimulant. So maybe that's why I drink so much coffee. I've kind of naturally worked out a way of surviving through it somehow. Yeah, know. you know, uh, I'm always hypercritical. I'm like, why are you giving all these kids all these drugs? You know, I did fine just smoking weed every fucking day. <laughs> <You know. laughs> That'll work too. <laughs> yeah, would, possibly, right? Legally. Again, it's always the different chemicals behave differently with everyone at different times and different times mm. in your life. And who knows what the hell works. But, um, well, hey, thank you very much for being on the show. This is awesome. My I, pleasure, um, man. I, you know, I don't even remember. You're one of the, these tattooers who has always been, you know, creative. You've had a unique voice for kind of, a, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to date you, but for as long as I've uh, been ke uh, keeping track of the tattoo world, really. Thank you, man. Um, you know, you're also uh, a prolific, I think that's the right word, musician. It's always yeah. a pleasure when you send over your tunes. Um, and, uh, and it shows in the production of what you have going on with that tattoo show with the Electric Modern series and all of the lead ups and all of the other projects, you know, leading up to that. You know, the, the music's awesome. The production's awesome. Um, Anyways, I'm really excited and I'm a little embarrassed that we're just kind of doing this through Zoom, a little low tech, and uh, hey, you know, all our ums and ahs will be in here. It but works anyways, and works. Let's uh, tell people first and foremost. Uh, let's let's just do the easy plugs to begin with, and then we'll do a little bit of backstory. But it's that it exists. What are your current projects? How are people going to catch up with your story if they are just tuning in? Okay, so um, current projects. So the, the, the in in this world of video, the current the main project for me is the that tattoo show that I host with a really good friend of mine, Chris. And we do a, a weekly kind of just two tattooists hanging out. And, um, you know, we just, I mean, it's just us really recording conversations that we've had in hotel bars at conventions for about the last 10 years. So we, we decided to start doing that during the first of the UK lockdowns, which I think was probably February or March last year. And then, um, it's kind of snowballed into this this thing that we were doing. There's 
there's never really been a plan. Um, and I don't think there really is still a plan. We just kind of make it up as we go. And if it feels like the right thing to do, then we're doing it. You know, it, you mentioned the Modern Electric show. We're currently re-serializing that onto the that tattoo show YouTube channel every week so that viewers that have watched that tattoo show can now watch the Modern Electric show, which is a, a little show that I, phoned, uh, I filmed at my shop. Um, and now we're going to film the second season based in my shop and Chrissy's shop, right? So because I think the story for tattoo studios around the world right now is, you know, how did you recover from, well, how, first of all, how did you get through the COVID thing? And then secondly, how did you recover? What's the route back? What's the route back for convention organisers? You know, I think that's the ongoing story for our industry. And I think it would be fascinating to watch two different people in two different studios that do different types of work reconfigure their businesses to, you know, because this might be ongoing for a little while longer yet, you know. So we thought, well, there's there's a good story there. There's a documentary. Um, I, I, I've got to be honest, I'm not. I'm not happy about being part of the story, but I think the most of the world aren't probably happy about being part of that story. It wasn't part of the plan, you know? Um, and then musically, I, I really haven't done any, I hadn't done any music for, let me see, prob probably five or six years. I just got so busy with stuff, you know, the traveling with the tattooing and stuff. It was just, it, it was impossible to, to, to stay in a band and be around for rehearsals and show. Again, I got a, I got locked in my house for a year, so I've made a, a little EP of some just some sounds that I'd heard traveling, and music that reminded me of Sundays at conventions in Europe, where they they seem to play a lot of um, melodic house music. And I just oh. I had this. It was summertime, and I thought, you know, I should have a go at that. How can I make guitars work in this music? You know, let me let me figure that out. You know, and so that's musically what I'm doing at the moment. But each next project you know once it's done it's sort of one and done i sort of had a little go at that kind of melodic house thing with electronics and it came out sounding more like depeche mode than anything else if i'm honest but that's because i'm from the 80s right you know uh -huh. so you can't sure you can't help but wear your influences on your sleeve uh -huh. and well let's so uh, let's, at the make, minute, let, let's make sure that we circle back to that too because i'd love to uh to hear about you know your experiences kind of doing music you know back in the day and like just how you know, I mean, and it seems like part of, I don't, I don't know your particular story, but certainly, uh, you know, a lot of big businesses kind of came in and, you know, pushed the art around a little bit. I'm interested to hear a little bit about that. I, I, at your leisure, I don't know where you were going with it. I'm sure I just disrupted your yeah. thought, though. No, no, no. It's, uh, I think that that's, it's a, it's a good point. Your influences, I think we're all artists, whether the or You're all this is what I do this and being the person you are, being there and no one likes it. At least you can stand by it and go, Well, I did it because I love it. You know, so ultimately, you know, for me, these things I started life in a terrible little punk rock band that that nobody but the four people in the band liked, really, if I'm honest. Oh, what well, jump in. really love it then for five million people can take it you know it's it, there's something very special about it to be guns and roses and i've used and a big chunk of it isn't really mass appeal it's some of it is you know because it was part of a genre that was big for a time but a lot of the stuff that i listen to you'd be lucky if they sold three thousand albums you know but those bands will we, we, sell 3,000 albums for the, their entire career. And so they, yeah. they build a career off of a little audience that really love what they do. I think that's the same with the, the tattoo stuff that's starting on YouTube. It doesn't put up the big numbers of the more clickbaity things or the viral videos and, and stuff like that. But the audience, uh, every single person watching, is really into that, that vibe, you know. So I'm you're sure. talking directly to a smaller audience. And I don't think it's always about oh, we didn't sell 20 million records, so we must be rubbish. I mean, we were rubbish. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> I mean, there was a very good reason why we didn't. We didn't, you know, we, we were awful. But um, 
but the, there was a few people that really got it. And I've all, I, I think I've always approached every art form that I do that way. It's, it's like I, I don't need to tattoo everybody in the world. I just need to tattoo the people that really are, are listening to what I'm putting down, you know, and getting Yeah, 100%. It, you know? Oh, yeah. I, I, there are a lot of ideas I'll come up with. People will be like, well, you know, most tattooers aren't really going to be, you know, that dedicated. They don't want to do that. They don't want to put the energy in. And it's like, that's okay. <laughs> you know, we, I, we can't work with every tattooer. You know, we can only work with the people who are, you know, kind of, I mean, we can work with anybody, but it, we're most effective, you know, by working with people that are, uh, you know, pushing in the same direction, at least. We don't want everybody thinking exactly alike. And I imagine, you know, you, you've worked with a lot of different types of personalities to kind of, you know, help, um, you know, guide guide your way through, you know, the the landscape. Did I lose you? I feel like I'm talking to myself. Oh, are you back? Yeah, I'm unmuted now. I'm back now, man. It kicked it kicked me out for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> okay well it's, it is still going out you know it's actually that's one of the beauties of using zoom is that because it's sorry, all cloud sorry based <laughs> oh are you you're not oh, there you're back okay um absolutely you know there's obviously there's so many similarities too between building a clientele of art you know collectors or tattoo collectors who want your art uh, tattooed on them you know uh, and music although with music you need to have anywhere between four and eight people you know that can you know roam the world <laughs> you know playing yeah, yeah. together you know despite all the craziness you know tattooing really is an amazing art where it's one-to-one -one, like you don't need anybody else you know you you can use other people you know and it's yeah, great to have sure. other people do things but um you know you can just tattoo people and they'll come back with their friends um that's exactly so it how did you transfer over from the from the music career into tattooing? Do you know what? I thought you might ask me that question, and I've been thinking about that for the all morning. Thinking, do you know what? I I really I have no clear line memory. You know, I can't draw a line straight through it. So, sure. Um, because I grew up around a culture of rock and roll and motorbikes, and I was known as that kid that could paint and draw mm -hmm. anything from paint flames on a motorbike tank to you know draw stuff. I and Pretty much from, I guess, from 18 or 19, I just always had, you know, like a couple of friends or, you know, that were either a close friend or a friend that was once a friend of a friend that did tattoos. Sure. And through conversations and just being fascinated with any art form, you kind of pick stuff up and then you have conversations with people. And then, you know, somebody would be like, hey, like a customer's asked me to create this tattoo and i've no idea how to put it together because you helped me out man and uh, like, draw yeah. it and, up and or so something whereabouts is this and what kind of music are you listening to like what kind of paint the picture of the scene of what, what, what okay you know? so th this is this is going to be from like the i guess the mid 80s onwards really and so i'm kind of hanging about in a couple of different tattoo shops um you know not on a regular basis by any means i was by by sort of 18 i was a professional musician so i i'm very fortunate that i go on tour I make a little bit of money, um, not nearly enough money, but I make a little bit of money to survive on. And then when I'm home, I'm like home for three or four months, just basically hanging around writing music for the next album or to go to, or, you know, preparing to go on tour again. So I've got a bunch of free time. And so you you can kind of, you know, sit around drawing in a tattoo shop for a couple of hours and, and things like that, because you haven't got anything to do for three months, you know. And I think that I just sort of accidentally sort of picked it up you know, bit by bit, but from just through conversations. And it wasn't until probably the, I guess, the early 2000s that the art working tattoo started to, to look like something that I could make you know, with my skill set, you know. So that kind of punk rock inspired, uh, you know, flyers, the Jamie Reed thing, the David Carson thing from Ray, Good, Ray, Ray Gunn magazine from the early 90s all of that kind of grunge typography and everything all of a sudden I started to see it like really early on with guys like Jeff Palumbo was really early to that Noon was really early to it there's mm -hmm. a Canadian artist called Jan Black that, was, that mm -hmm. was doing stuff that was just crazy out there you know and I remember seeing it and thinking oh well hang on a minute if 
if we if I can do this, then I'm way more interested in than I was five minutes ago. Because the the thing with the artwork, whereas I, I really love the artwork, I love traditional Japanese traditional stuff and you know, I, I still dig, you know, the kind of tribal stuff, but the Leo Zulueta stuff from the, the mid eighties, you know, the kind of original idea. Um, but for me, it never really spoke to me because my, my thing as a punk rock kid was always, I'm not Japanese, I'm not religious, I'm not in a tribe. Where's the artwork for me? Where's the, the Misfits logo? Where's the Black Flag logo? Where's stuff that speaks of my world right now, you know? And of course, nobody wanted to draw that anti-Thatcher, you know, <laughs> propaganda uh, on people's arms. Sure. You know? And, and I, I think it, it kind of just came... It kind of came to me. If you want to look at the tattoo stuff, just put up the other profile. It's Paul Talbot tattoo. So this is more the painting and music profile. There you go. So, you know, if you look at even those first two pictures on the Instagram, um, you can see that there's, you know, there's an influence of like punk rock flyers mm -hmm. and graffiti and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I, I guess it wasn't until... The Pretty amazing work here. We are having, uh, we're back to having some Zoom issues, but we'll take the time to uh, peruse. You got it because I could have started then. <laughs> ah, you're back. Yeah, man. We lost you from uh, the second. Uh, I didn't say anything of any importance. <laughs> so you're back to work, but it was a long time. I think a lot of people from America that are tuning in don't quite understand how long, you know, the um, lockdown was over there and how, you know, it, it was, you know, over here in many places, it was three months. Yeah. You know, and then people were back to work over, you know, maybe California was pretty rough too here, but um, what was it like for the last year and a half since COVID over there? And, um, what's it been like since you've been opened back up? I mean, the, the opening back up this time around has been fine because we'd already done the reconfiguration of the shop. So we had to, we had to move so much stuff around that in the end, it was just easier to completely re reconfigure the inside of the building. It was just going to be way less hassle. And so it, and we got time to do it. So the, the shop's got a completely different layout than it had from, uh, pre lockdown i think the lockdown in the end lasted on and off because it started and stopped so that it sort of lasted for eight months nine months i think something like that if you added it all together so um i had a lot of time on my hands and it was it was pretty difficult it was pretty worrying for a lot of people we were very lucky that i run the the shop with my wife she, well i say i run the shop with my wife she runs the business <laughs> with with me meddling and um <laughs> And so because the, the, of the way our business was configured, we got a lot of help from the government. And so awesome. the stress of the financial problems were taken away. So, you know, because we, we, I, I was uh, one of those, you know, free school meals kids and I lived on benefits for big chunks of my life. So I've always had a, a personal, like a point, a, a morality point for me was always to pay my personal tax, even though there are lots of ways that as a company director, I could get around it. Sure. But for me, it was a point of honour to go, look, I've taken out of this system I want to put back in. And so I, you know, I, I still pay personal tax instead of just paying corporation tax in the UK. Because it's important to me that it's one of the best things about the, the way. Um, so, but then because of that, the government turned around to me and effectively said, here's 80% of your wages to sit and drink margaritas for eight months. So, <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. So I, I pulled the guitars out of storage and set about making some music and did a bunch of painting and, and had a, a fine old time. And, and actually, coming back to work was the only the sort of anxiety thing. Wasn't really doing it. It was just, is anybody still going to want to come? Are they going to be worried about the, the cases? And is it going to be safe? And, um, and it turns out that everybody was cool. Everybody's absolutely fine. We do have a, a bit of a problem 
with at the moment because of the, the different stages that countries are in with their different um, their various bits and pieces. That's my daughter's work. I think a lot of that. Um, oh, she's awesome. doing she's doing very well. <laughs> But I'd like to say it's because she had an amazing teacher. But, um, probably not. She's well, just doing it all great. by herself. Yeah, it's clean, right? You know, yeah. Ni- nineteen years old, Jay. Nineteen amazing. years old. <laughs> and so, uh, she uh, did she apprentice under you, or I mean, I imagine. Let's... Yeah, so she she apprent- she's been technically apprenticing since she was a- about eight years old, right? Sure. You know, she grew up in a tattoo shop. shop. She and... yeah, she's second generation tattooer, like my son. So. They both learned to tattoo by default, really. And right. from me using them as slave labor to start with <laughs> and, and making them clean the shop and stuff, you know. So they were like, well, I may as well learn to tattoo and make some money, right? So I mean, uh, te- technically, people have been having kids for that purpose way longer than any other. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Family work for free, right? Yeah. yeah. So it is what it is. But then they get to carry it on. That's yeah. The, uh... Awesome. You know, so it, it, but the, the thing that was nice is it, it certainly from our point of view because we don't, we run a custom shop, you know, so we don't do any walk ins. Um, everybody there's got their own particular style, they do their own thing, and um, and so of course, uh, the clients that are booked in that are coming, uh, they've got their this is Lucas, my black and gray artist that does that stuff, you know, the, um, he's our obligatory Polish artist because half of the UK is there's a huge Polish community in the UK. And a lot of them uh-huh. are very, very good tattooers. You know. Nice. Yeah, yeah for sure. The, um, okay, so we have a, a couple comments here in the chat room. Let's see. Um, well, somebody's here beaming in from France. And when I clicked on the uh, translation, they, they said, uh, everything you say in French would be easier for me to understand. <laughs> <sighs> no parlez yeah. vous Francis? Sorry. Sorry. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not very far away, but my... my I did learn it in school, French, but the way it was taught was they just write a bunch of words on a board with no context and expect you to remember. Oh. Like It's like trying to learn a dictionary one word at a time. I'm like, it's sure. just not taught in a way that you can really, you can really do it. So I'm, I'm sorry. You know. no, I, I did spend some time in France. Paris is beautiful. Um, but uh, I did learn a little bit of Spanish because I was a computer programmer. So I was programming a quiz for my Spanish data. So, um, dame dos cervezas, por favor. There you go. Uh, may I have yeah, two beers, I'll have please. one of them as well. My, yeah. my, friend, <laughs> my friend learned how to say two for me also. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, Jose is asking, uh, why do you like to tattoo flowers and roses? Or, or maybe presuming you do like to tattoo uh, flowers and roses. Um, why do I like to tell? I, I think they're as an object, they're they're really beautiful things. I think you can get endless variations in in sort of flowers. The the uh, flowers that I do, not particularly roses, but um, the flowers that I do have got a massive Japanese influence. I think it's me kind of trying to pervert Japanese artwork into my own thing, you know, and trying to nod a little bit to my influences. You know, I think you can, they're, they're good for shape and organic flow. So where anything, because a lot of my, my tattoos, as you can see from that, they, they involve straight lines and things that don't necessarily flow with the body. So it's really nice to, to maintain some contrast between things that are straight across the body and things that are not straight across the body, you know, things that flow with the body. And so I play that game of making things move and then having things very static. And of course, if, you, if you're combining a very organic uh, object with a with a very static piece of typography you get that fantastic contrast between the two things one thing has got some movement and the other thing doesn't have movement so i think that's why i like doing it yeah these are beautiful and now how much of the um i mean it feels like they're just kind of leaving the design into your hands but what, what does your client process look like to create these do they just say here's my body part go for it do they ask you for flowers or subjects or a little bit of everything It's a little bit of everything. I mean, and the clients have, have normally got an idea of a theme or they want to focus on a main object. That, may, that main object in the tattoo may be a face. It may be, uh, it may be a flower. Occasionally, it may be a helicopter. You know, and I, and, um, I, I do all of my tattoos as a complete collaborative process with the, with the customer you know, or the client because uh, they, they've got to wear it. 
all the way through. So we do it, you know, I do a lot of stuff now via Zoom. Zoom's been really good for this. I do consultations via Zoom. Um, and I, I, because of working in graphic design, I'm good at pulling a brief out of a client who maybe finds it difficult to explain what it is they're trying to get at. I think personal conversations are much better than email because some of the stuff that you would say out loud, if you wrote it down in an email, you sound a little bit nuts, you know, and people are concerned mm -hmm. about that kind of thing, you know. Um, and I try and keep it really organic just between two people sitting in a room because that's ultimately what it's going to end up at is that there are going to be two people sitting in a room one trying to make a great piece of art and the other one trying to it and figure it out, you know. I had to think that put a restart on somebody that uh, them, you know, it's not a situation you want to be in, you know. Yes, I do. Sorry, the um I'm I'm watching the uh, the chat rooms here a little bit also while we speak. <laughs> that's a, that's okay. <laughs> no problem. So let's talk about the um, the new shows, right? So you you met Chris. Well, like we could beam forward a little bit. Um, okay. We have, well, actually, no, no, no. Let's uh, let's talk about some of the tattoo shows that you know. The, the, there's TV shows, right? That actually yeah. exist. You, you were there pre-TV. Um, clearly, you're like making a, a your own show. You know, yeah. you, you must have dabbled with real TV, not real TV, but real TV production. You know, traditional uh antiquated tv production let's uh, let's hear a little bit about your experience why you decided to do it because it's obviously a tremendous amount of work to try to do this all yourself to, or to, yeah. even with one other person yeah um well, let's hear it and, and yeah was well, that I enough think, for you to go from yeah there? yeah well i think my background isn't in uh visual at all so i was you know for anything like that if i was called in to do that i would be the same guy so i would be the guy running all the microphones into a mixing desk getting an output you know, recording, recording that for people, you know, and, and running radio packs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. The, the sound was my side of things. Um, and the, the visual side of things has always been Chris's stuff. You know, Chris went to, to uh, he went to college and studied a little bit of filmmaking and stuff. My, my ex expertise in that literally came from, um, or my fascination with it came from uh, a client of mine, uh, I was sitting in the studio and I, I got a bunch of travel trips coming up that were all back to back. And I was going to be out the studio for about three months doing a bunch of stuff. One of them was Jiminy Peak. The last time I was there for the, um, the, re the, um, the paradise show. Yeah. We, we've done a yeah. whole mess of them. It's, 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 they're yeah. all blur. <laughs> so like, yeah, it's a bit of a blur for me. So, um, so I, that was one of them. I was going to Puerto Rico to do something and I got a bunch right. of, a bunch of other stuff, you know? And so he said, Hey, you should do a vlog. That sounds really interesting. And I was, and this is about 2014, 2015. And I was like, a, a what now? And um, so I, I got, I turns out I've got a camera in the studio that I use for making, um, uh, for making tattoo pictures. And it's got a record button. It records video. So I thought, oh wow, I'll just, I'll just take it and record video. So I, I literally picked this thing up. It's got no stand. It's got no microphone on it. I picked it up, started pointing it at my face and recording things and just seeing how they turned out. And, and they were dreadful, but, um, but I learned a lot along the way, right? You, you learn, you have to learn by your mistakes, you know, and, and that's why I tried a bit of vlogging. I realized that I, I feel really self-conscious holding what my friend James always refers to as Paul's eyeball on a stick that he talks to, <laughs> you know, and it always, that, that, that always made me a little bit um, just self-conscious really. So then I stopped doing that. I watched some other smaller shows and, and obviously you reference the things like, you know, the other, the, the, the mainstream tattoo shows that have been on there that were hugely popular with people. And we sort of looked at it and was like, why is it, why do people like it? What is it about it, you know? And, and so then we thought, well, it's the, it's the human stories, right? Uh, in a tattoo shop, that could be a motorbike shop like this. How did you get here? Um, and so then we set about trying to make a little, I think my internet connection's a little bit unstable, but we, we set about trying to make a really, really low budget version of um i you know one of the big budget shows sure. and i really loved it you know and again the first season it's it's 
reasonably well filmed. It's reasonably well edited, but we work again. We learned a hell of a lot along the way. Um, and, and then we were literally gearing up to start recording season two of that show. And I think in the very last episode, I, I kind of say to the camera, um, OK, I'll see you in around six weeks for the second season. Right? And that was like, Nick, it's coming up for two years ago. Oh. No. So, <laughs> so, you know. so the, the first part of season two, where we go previously on Modern Electric, the series, you know, there will be a whole section of kind of catching up. And you, you, know, you, what could, you should do the uh, like a Doctor Who uh, oh. fast forward. Man, it's going to be like super, super crazy. But, but I learned so. I learned a lot, and then while I was while I was doing that, Chris had I think Chris had seen some stuff that I was doing, and so Chris was filming some stuff on his own. I was filming some stuff on my own. My stuff looks like crap. His stuff sounds like crap. So then we 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 kind of got chatting, and we we were like, we should just get together, and you do the video stuff, and I'll do the audio stuff, and. Maybe we can make something that a little people can watch, right? You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't works. look like horrible home movies, you know. And and so that was that was the kind of the, that was the journey, man. I mean, it's it's that's like I guess seven seven six or seven years ago or something like that. Um, and now, you know, I I, I think I started the. Um, I started the vlog with a camera that was probably worth about a hundred pounds uh -huh. with a, a Lenu before we came on air that I'm now talking to you on a, a, a camera that I'm using for a webcam that costs two and a half thousand pounds. <laughs> it looks really good. So, she, <laughs> she, it should do for that amount of dough, man. Yeah. yeah you <laughs> if know, it didn't, uh, it'd be going straight back. Have you, uh, have you got just to talk tech real quick? If you haven't gotten to the point where you need a teleprompter or you have a teleprompter hooked up to it, do you? No, no, we don't do anything like that. We, it's uh, um, pretty amazing. Well, I mean, we dabbled, yeah, we dabbled with that stuff, but because yeah. we edit after the fact, we've sure. got, we have the um, the the benefit that we can do things like to keep the energy up in the show, um, in, between, up. Uh, in between uh, uh, the yeah, bits go, that the yeah. audience actually see. Um, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, we tell, well, what we end up doing is telling just very rude jokes to each other to deliberately try and corpse each other when we're trying to do our, do our little bits, you know, it's become a sort of a part of the show, you know, so, yeah. um, that goes on sort of backstage, if you like, and I'm, uh, it's I'm immediately kind of intimidating. currently putting together <laughs> like a, a little, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to put together like a little reel of um, of like the outtakes for a, a little special sort of Christmas show or something of like, this is the stuff you don't see, you know, nice. so it's like it's going to involve just editing the punchline in because, you know, you like it's not fit for publication, that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, YouTube sure, will just yeah. pull it down. <laughs> there is a couple of there, uh, there's a high proportion of tattooers that are watching this. That are that are interested in video that are making some videos. Some of them are on Camtasia. Some of them are on Premiere. Um, how yeah. do you balance it? Like, part of me, whenever a tattooer learns how to do video stuff, it's like you're going to be too fucking busy tattooing to do video stuff. Yeah. Like, how do you how do you balance that between the the two different skill sets? Because both of them take a, a long time. Yeah, it's well, for me, the the video editing is pretty quick because I've spent. A, at least a decade of my life doing lane based editing in audio. So I'm, I'm used to, you know, sometimes having 40 lanes of audio in logic and, and cutting that up. So when you've got two lanes of video, which have got audio built in, actually, if you're used to us, you know, when you look at the screen on in Pro uh -huh. Tools or something like that, it's like this. Sure. Well, suddenly when it's like that, it's not, it doesn't intimidate me at all. Right. So, um, so I'm probably best at the the audio side of it and then the editing side because i'm pretty quick and i use final cut because it's the fastest one that i've found to do what i do and i know that there are like chris is a big fan of something like davinci resolve and premiere and i'm like yeah they're, they're fantastic and they work but this one's quick and it's a youtube show i'm not making saving private ryan you know i don't do a lot of these like wizzy wazzy dissolves and stuff i mean i look at these classic movies and they're all just hard cut to hard cut to hard cut and i'm like so i just just go through that stuff cut out what we call all the fat all the nonsense get it down to that and then work out you know sort of 27 minute runtime for the podcast and then the reviews 
like Chris edits the reviews and I just do the audio on them. So, and I've got a really tight diary. My, my week is, is, is just scheduled out as you found trying to schedule a time to talk to me. It's like, dude, I can't do anything for two months. So like, I, I know exactly what I'm doing every one of those days. You know, this has got to happen this day. This has got to happen this day. And so, but I'm, I've, I'm used to having, you know, that kind of thing with working in the music business. I worked as a sound engineer and played. So I made records with bands when I wasn't making my own records. Um, so I had a pretty busy schedule there. Uh, so I don't mind that, you know, opening up my, my calendar and just every single day is full of stuff to do. I just kind of work through it. And again, I'm doing, I'm doing stuff I love, man. It's not, it's not like it's a job. I mean, nobody's ever right. caught me out for this. They've, nobody's ever figured out that Paul's just mucking about <laughs> and we're paying him. Do you know sure. what I mean? So, oh, yeah. so for me, it's, I'm, I'm not, I don't, it doesn't feel like I'm working right? because it's, it's funny. I mean, sometimes when I'm editing the tattoo show, I'm just, dude, well, I'm just falling about <laughs> laughing at the stuff that I can't put in. There's like a whole other episode that I could put together that I'm like, no yeah. way, we'll be cancelled instantly. You know? <laughs> oh, nice, nice. Right. And, then, uh, and, and Karen's probably like, are you laughing at yourself again? <laughs> yeah, you know, well, when all, if I'm editing at night, I'm sitting on headphones just chuckling like a maniac. And she just, <laughs> she goes off and watches the Kardashians or something, you know, and, nice, and does nice. that instead. Uh, hey, so I've had a, a, a call, uh, uh, a message in here from the Reinventing the Tattoo uh, app. Uh, Whitney D says, thank you for being such a force in the industry. Uh, well, well, am I? Well, thank you. Yeah, you are a you. force in the industry. Uh, I'm uh, wondering what machines much. you're presently using and how you feel about the machine evolution into wireless pens. Okay, so I'm, well, uh, I'm currently using two wireless machines. Um, I've got one the FK Irons made, which is the Flux. And I've got one that Cheyenne made. I've got the three and a half, three and a half mil. Uh, I think it's called the Soul Nova Unlimited. It's just the black pen shaped one. I, I don't pay a lot of attention to the names of things and stuff. Um, I use the, the Flux I use for, for most of the lining, um, you know, most of the, the color packing and shading. Uh, and then I really like the Cheyenne for black and gray and more of the soft stuff because it's an, it's an inherently softer machine. I detest the control system with a passion, uh, but it is a very, very good machine. So I, I, I kind of have to live with it for, <laughs> for, that, for that reason, unfortunately. Um, I have spoken to Cheyenne and I'm hopeful that they'll put some kind of user feedback system on it so that you at least have an idea of what voltage the thing's running at. But ultimately, it's, it's so good of a machine that, um, I love it for the job that it does. And I kind of, I put up with that, you know, that Harry Potter one, one thing, you know, that just drives me mental. I would just prefer up and down buttons for more voltage, less voltage, you know, that would be plenty. But I think it's, I think the wireless thing is just the logical next step, right. To, to go there. The only thing I don't like about it is I think as early adopters, like all early adopters in any technology, you know, we know that the, these machines are going to come down in price really sharply once the R and D phase is finished. You know, it's once R and D has come down, then you know these machines are going to drop in price. So I think you're, you're probably playing a little bit over the odds for the machine at the moment, but um, I think it's worth it. You know, particularly with the tattoos that I do that tend to jump body parts, uh, where I'm forever having to kind of move my bed around and move my client around. These days, I can just leave the bed stationary and just kind of walk walk around the client with the wireless machine. So I find that I, I, I've found it genuinely a, a bit of a game changer for me. It just it just gives you that freedom to just really, really sort of walk around and and and, and do what you got to do. And I uh, like another, them. Sorry, another another question, and kind of similar, um, some, somewhat similar. Uh, clearly, you've had um, you know. Uh, mo uh, a lot of experience uh, tattoo, tattooing and, and, and doing art with your body. Do you have like, do you stretch? Do you have like an ergonomic chair? Like how do you do, you do anything to, to keep your body in, in not achy format or, or do you just have an achy body? Yoga. No, yoga. Every day. Every single day. Yoga. Actually, uh, I picked up the yoga tip from uh, Derb Morrison at, at the Paradise, one of the Paradise gatherings. He was doing a yoga class. And me being the typical punk rocker, I was like, oh, hippies, look at the hippies, you know. And then I kind of looked into it and went, do you know what? He's got a really, really good idea there. That's a genius idea. So, you know, I do, I do a bit of stretching and a bit of that. I think if you can keep yourself 
supple because you don't really need to be strong to tattoo, right? Um, but you you know you need to be supple and flexible, and um, uh, learning the learning the don't move the bed, put your clock, put your bed in one place and never ever move it. Move m- get the client to swap ends on the bed or move your tattoo station around. Don't sit tattooing upside down. Having spent you know, seven or eight years of my life sitting on a pelly case in a 1.5 by 1.5 meter booth in conventions in Europe, you, you get, you know, you realize that you are like, if I carry on doing this, I'm, I'm going to just be in a world of hurt. So you, you start, uh, I think because I came to tattooing later in life as well, that I was already, I got used to that kind of having to protect my body from injuries, you know, so torn tendons are a pain in the ass and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So sure. that was, yeah. Musicians have similar ish, like anything that's repetitive, yeah, you know, uh, dude, your dude, issue, this, have this shoulder, dude, this shoulder, man, Jesus, that, 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 there's a pinch point there, and that's where you put a guitar strap that holds a 13 pound guitar for two hours every right. night that you're going to throw around and run around with. So, you pretty, you know, they've even started doing yoga classes for musicians now where they, they, they get you to hold the, hold your instrument on a strap and do mm. exercises with it to get used to the balance and stuff. And, yeah, and I think that's, that's pretty awesome. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Because we tend to stand on stage, you know, particularly if you're not the, the main performer, if you're the backing band, you stand on one leg, so you've shifted all your weight to one side. So if you're standing like this and your head's down, it's just, it, it's, you can really mess yourself up. So, sure. yeah, yoga and, you know, stretch, eat healthy. You know, I'm, I'm vegan, I'm teetotal. Okay. You know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, you know, because I... Uh, I think it's important, you know, especially as you get, especially you get deeper into your career, you know, that stuff's going to start hurting, you know, so don't yeah. get there in the first place. Look after yourself on the way there and look after yourself in here, you know, because tattooing is a, a solo job, right? You don't, you, you tend to only get negative feedback. No, nobody really gives you the, the good feedback. You know, we all kind of want people to say nice stuff, but we all only remember the bad stuff that people sure. say. And that is the nature of the internet, that it is a bit vicious at times and it's just, it is what it is. And you have to rise above that stuff and figure your route through it, right? You know, hundred percent. No, no, no doubt about it. And you know, the thing is, you know, with tattooing, especially, you know, just the, due to the nature of tattooing, you're helping people become who they want to be. You know, and then as a practitioner, yeah. as a tattooer, like you are spending every day helping people become who they want to be, for good or bad. You know, whether you're conscious yeah, of it yeah. or not. And uh, you know, so you know if you get a, you know, a significant amount of success, you know, again, whether you acknowledge it or not, you actually have like a, a real amplified voice, you know, in a, in a respected position in your community. And so sometimes we'll see, and sometimes I've been part of it. I'm sure you have too, you know, when we're growing yeah. up, all of a sudden we're getting a little bit more, our, we're amp- our voice is amplified a little bit past our maturity or skill level. Right. So then yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. all of a sudden we have to adjust accordingly, but you know, tattooing really does let you be who you want to be. So if you have, you know, bad, you know, if you haven't worked on yourself, if all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're going to all of a sudden amplify things that are, that are not, not good to amplify. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've definitely, I've definitely experienced that, you know, I mean, there's a, for me, I was I was in a really funny place, you know. I'd started doing these these weird tattoos that nobody in the world of tattooing really got. It was it was just a bit strange, and and then um, probably three, maybe two or three years after, I'd, I'd sort of put this stuff out, and I was you know I was looking at Noon's work and and Jeff's work, and and you know I think by then probably Loik's work as well, and then the trash pole. Um, and then that you know it kind of opts my for that kind of thing to suddenly be you know this this guy you know i i was just sitting the punk kid just scribbling in my tattoo studio right and going all of a sudden people are like well what do you think about this what do you think do you know what i, I need to spend a little bit more time in this world before I, I start talking about what's right and wrong with this you can't walk into a community like literally open the door and go, all this is wrong. Because, you know, quite rightly, people go, well, who are you? you know? <laughs> I mean, and-, and so I, th- I find now, you know, more than a decade into owning the shop, 
I feel like I can, you know, I can weigh in on a few subjects. There is still stuff that I just, I bail on that I go, look. Oh, ah, uh, well, it's really sad to have lost him, but that was a, an amazing interview with Paul, Paul Talbot. Um, you definitely want to check out their YouTube channel. Oh, is he back? Maybe he's back. This is the beautiful thing about uh, doing these live. We're hitting the, we're, we're you know, in the NASCAR, oh, we're hitting the corner. Oh, my God, downstairs must be. Yeah. The, oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I think, and I think all of my, all, where do you get to? <laughs> back, on, back on the track. Woo. Yeah, woo. yeah, sorry. Um, well, maybe, I live uh, in a maybe... The thing is, what you've got to explain to people, right, is I live in a tiny little village and we still have a milkman here. You know, so there's awesome. a there's a there's a rule of thumb in the UK that if somebody still delivers your milk to your house, you've got the shittest internet internet connection <laughs> in the UK. Like it's not fiber optic or anything like that. It's little copper wires that still uh, hang up on the street. You know, awesome. <laughs> you know, uh, not to not to talk about fucking COVID and but uh, part of me, like I've always had, you know, discussions, you know, with Europeans about governments and, you know, we're like, oh, what was us? And you're like, oh, what was us? I'm like, yeah, but when it comes down to it, I go to the hospital over here and go bankrupt over there. You send me on my way for a hundred bucks, like, yeah. you know, uh, but then somehow through this COVID shit, like over here in America, everyone wants to like get on Facebook and fucking kill each other. But yet somehow we got the vaccines around. And then yeah, in it's Europe, weird, it's like somehow it, you know, isn't going out or nearly as well. And, you know, a couple of Europeans were like, you know, the doctors still have to sign everything in fucking triplicates, you know, twice. You know, they're still using yeah. fax machines. I was like, uh, oh, wow. okay. <laughs> it's like that, that, that same thing that I love about uh, the old nature of, of Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah. We need to figure out a way because, you know, we got to get through this shit somehow. Anyways. Yeah. Um, you, while we have your strong internet, uh, do you want to let people know your upcoming schedule? So we talked a bit about the past, but maybe before we uh, end our interview, um, Wait, you, do you have anything coming up or what do you, what do you have planned for the future? No plans. No plans right now. I'm, I'm no holding fire on that. I know I'm doing the Brighton Tattoo Convention in the UK uh, next February, I believe. Uh, that's the only show now that I do in the, uh, in the UK because sadly the London Tattoo Convention is, is uh, no more, which is a, a whole, the terrible, terrible, sad thing. Horrible. But I completely support but He'll do something Mickey. next. Yeah, I mean, I completely support Mickey and his decision. I, I, we spoke via email, and um, and, I, and I get it. I, I totally get it. But I can't help but lament the loss of it, you know, because it was, it, you know, I'm biased, right? But I, I felt like it was the best tattoo show in the world, you know. But that is, I'm massively, massively biased. It's, it's hard, like, it's hard not to, like, you know, London and Paris, you know. Yeah, there's some yeah. great shows, other places in the world too, of course, of course. Of course but of course. those two seem to be able to get the largest amount of tattooers of the highest quality from the different schools. Yeah. And people didn't seem to be fighting each other there. Sometimes, you know, everyone wants to get along with Mickey and Tintin, right? I mean, London, the thing about London was London was the only tattoo convention that you could go to where, and this happened to me. I had a com I was on my way to my booth holding a cup of tea and in the journey from the, the front door to the booth, my booth, I had a conversation with Jack Rudy, a conversation with Philip Blue, and a conversation with Robert Hernandez. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, and I'm like, Boom. why do they let me come to this show? I mean, these guys are actually legends. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Jeez. No, that's, like, if you uh, want to be intimidated, that's a building to sit down in and go, yeah, I can tattoo too. You know? <laughs> uh, 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 agreed wholeheartedly. I remember I met uh, uh, Philip for about two minutes, maybe. Well, actually, it was probably more like 30 seconds. I waited for like 15 minutes and then, um, I uh, 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 I gave him the the paradise packet, you know, and I was like, I was like, we're doing a tattoo convention in Western Massachusetts. I hope you come. I love you. You guys are great. I love you. Okay, I gotta go. Bye. And I ran away. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I literally came over here. This is yeah, yeah. probably like the main thing I was supposed to yeah. do, and I fucking you know fanboyed out and ran away. <laughs> yeah, we all do it, man. I mean, those those are oh, yeah. guys that I I just I never thought I'd be able to do what they do in a room that, I mean I still can't do most of what they do I just, I just do the Paul stuff but yeah I mean to see you know to see them and then and then stand you know and, and kind of speak to them for a few minutes is 
I mean, you can't help being a little, being a little bit of a fanboy. I'm like, I'm walking away going, I was just talking to Zach Moody. I can't believe it. And he knew yeah, my name. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even have to tell him. You know, it's, just, it's kind of crazy. It's just crazy. No. You, well, you, you do no. also get credit, right, but, for yeah, uh, so, lasting a long time. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you get this you get this far in and you've got the, the grey hair to prove it and stuff, you know, so it's good. So beyond, beyond Brighton... Um, we're not making any firm plans until we're sort of, I, I guess, this point next year, and then we'll start thinking about getting out to Europe again, seeing some friends, and uh, getting out to the States and doing some stuff. You know, I've got a bunch of friends all across the States. I know I've got American clients that are desperate for me to get out there, and got to take well, it as you know as as steadily as I can because I, you know, it's it, at the moment, for for instance, for my European clients to get a tattoo from me, they'd have to fly to England self-isolate in a hotel for 10 days, get right. tattooed, or well, pass a COVID test, then yep. get tattooed, then fly home, self-isolate in, a, in another building for 10 days, and then they can go yeah. back to work. I mean, yeah, is that the same thing with, uh, like, with vaccinated people too? Or... You know, so we've... Yeah. And, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah, that yeah, with vaccinated well. too? Yeah. Know, so it, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's... It, the, the, the kind of the rules seem a little bit fluid at the moment. They're doing right. more announcements, I think, in the coming couple of weeks as to what the travel arrangements are going to be. But we just felt like the safest thing was to go, do you know what? Like, let's look at it again after we've done the Brighton sure. show in the UK. And if there's, if there's the ability to travel, then we'll travel. Because I love it. I still love it. And I love getting on a plane and still learn something brand new. I walk past the booth and somebody's doing something that I'm like, oh, I didn't think of that. I can, <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, that's what I love about, you know, for the, 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 that human interaction. You know, I mean, I tell people all the time, like both my kids, when I was teaching them, I was like, look, conventions happen because tattooists don't generally play golf. Right. right? That's our golf course. Right? It's where we do a bit of business. It's where we meet some friends. It's where we pick up some tips. Is where we make connections, and I think it's a huge part of the scene. You know, and um, I just hope that we can keep that scene alive because that's got to be a nightmare for those six guys in the shop. I mean, I, to get sixty thousand people in Brussels or something. You know, <laughs> if that show goes ahead, man, you'll see that show is huge. Like I've worked. Well, this year, this year will be a little years. bit smaller, I'm sure. Yeah, it'll have to be, man. I mean, that was yeah. that, that. That was on a Sunday at four o'clock. I, I went outside for a cigarette. And they were, they were doing this whole, they'd reached the fire limit and they were doing one in, one out. This, and this building is enormous. So I'm like, what is the fire limit on this building? It's, it's incredible, but it's an incredible show. I lo absolutely yeah. love it to bits, you know. Yeah, no, we're, 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 we're all crossing we're our fingers. Time, no, yeah. Just one set of fingers. <laughs> um, we'll, uh, we'll pencil in uh, October 20th to the 23rd of 2022. Yeah, for sure. So that's uh, over a year and a half from now. We'll be doing Paradise again back at Jamaica. Oh, we can definitely schedule that. So if uh, and if we're oh, that'll be great, man. I'd love to go back there. That's a great setting. Oh, it's beautiful. And if uh, if we're still not traveling back and forth by next October, then we'll we'll continue to Zoom. <laughs> ah, goddamn internet! Well, Paul, if you're still there and we're not talking over each other, this was a great interview. I appreciate it. Um, well, you're almost back. I think your neighbors are like rattling the pans or something. Ah, night, there you are. There I am. I'm back. Sorry. It's, it, obviously, it's my dodgy English internet, you know, yeah, or this village good. internet in the UK. <laughs> uh -huh. um, why don't we, uh, you want to do, I'll, I'll, I'll feature you. And then if you want to look into the camera and do a, a fantastic closeout, <laughs> Close. then uh, we'll, we'll see if the internet lasts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I'm Paul from That Tattoo Show. Well, I'm just Paul, depending on what you're doing. It. Thanks for having me, guy. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you, Gabe, for putting up with my uh, dodgy internet connection and chatting to me and not asking me awkward questions. It's been really good fun. Watch all the stuff on this channel. These guys are putting out some amazing content and it's, it's really enjoyable to watch. And sit back, have a cup of coffee and uh, enjoy loads of good tattoo content.
Okay, you have to uh, let everybody know the exact ways to get in touch with you. Otherwise, they won't know, or they might not know. Oh, yeah. All, just, just put Paul Talbot Tattoo into your search engine, and it'll all come up. Don't worry about it. I, I, I know all about that sort of SEO business. So just put my name into, the, into your internet search engine. Add the word tattoo to it. Otherwise, you get some weird uh, model guy that like, seems to like wearing white underpants a lot. Uh, put, <laughs> make sure you add, add the word tattoo. And you can find me from there. And you can hit me up on Instagram, send me a direct messages. I've, I'm on Facebook. I'm on all that sort of things. Or just go to the YouTube and message, message us on That Tattoo Show YouTube channel as well. Perfect. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks again. I'll, uh, Thank I'll you, edit mate. this up a little bit for the, for the techie stuff. And uh, yeah, this was, this was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And we'll uh, catch up uh, next time you're releasing shows. How often are you releasing shows on, on That Tattoo Show? So like every day, every other day? Okay, so that tattoo show is, uh, we do a podcast show that's like this. It's Tattoo Talk every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in the UK. So, you know, just watch it whenever it comes out. At the moment, on Monday, we're serializing the Modern Electric Season 1 every awesome. Monday. Uh, Chris has generally has a review, a product review that goes out every Wednesday. So there's normally three pieces awesome. of content a week. Yeah, yeah, we're Fuck working yeah. hard. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know if, you, goes, if you if you figure out how to keep it sustainable, man, you're you're gonna kill it. I mean, you're already killing it, but uh, it's exactly you know that as you were saying, you know, and ultimately, if you know, wrapped up in one, it's like just do awesome stuff consistently over time. That you know, and to your point, like if if you appreciate it, and it's good enough for you, and you have high quality standards then uh, even if the people aren't there right away, they will eventually find you, you know? So, if, you know, if you build it, they will come. Sometimes yeah, that might just take, it. they might come in a decade later. <laughs> yeah, know? I mean, sometimes but, it uh, takes time, but like, yeah. but the, the good thing about that is, is we keep getting better at it. So they don't watch all of the dodgy stuff from the beginning of the channel, unless they go back and do a deep dive and go, God, these guys sure. have got better at this over the years. Uh, well, good. with three new awesome pieces a week too, it's uh, that's enough to, uh, to keep it going. But anyways, thanks again. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up uh, in the very near future. Okay, mate. Take care. See you soon.